What's up, guys? This is Nick from Stradwise.com, and it's Mokto Madness. <laughs> no, no, I can't say Mokto Madness. That'd be really stupid. But today, I'm comparing uh, the two most popular Mokto boots from the most popular, most beloved American boot companies. If you are looking for an American-made Mokto style of boot, you have almost certainly come across Red Wing and Thorogood, which are the brands that we're looking at today. So as you can see, the boots have a lot of similarities to them. And like, I know a lot of people out there would say like, what's the big difference? They're both boots. And yeah, they're both mock toes. They both got wedge soles. They both got a good year welt, making them easy to resole. But they're actually myriad important differences that are definitely gonna have a lot of impact for you, especially depending on what you're wearing them for. Because there are some that would say that one boot is better suited for fashion and one is better suited for function. There are others that would dispute that. But nonetheless, there are a lot of differences here that I'm gonna get into that's gonna show you why these boots are actually a lot more different than you might Think. Now, I've actually already reviewed these boots before. Uh, the Mokto from Red Wing was actually my charcoal boot that I got. You check that out right there. That's like one of my oldest pairs of boots. It's very, very beloved. And the Thargood I've uh, also reviewed as well on this channel before too. So I'm just gonna, okay, there it is as well. Now, I've worn these boots very, very hard. I've worn them for many, many, many months, uh, actually years for this Mokto here. They're really beat up and I've got a really good idea as to the pros and cons of each boot. So let's get started with the aesthetics. We're gonna get into the leather and the outsole and the construction and the fit later on. For starters, let's go with what you can see here right now, right? So obviously they're very similar, but the thoroughgood is taller. It's got this pull tab on the back. It's also got speed hooks here, which mean that it's a lot easier to get on and off. So the speed hooks combined with the pull tab on the back make this for a boot that is like, you could argue it's more functional. It's easy to get on and off pretty quickly. Another thing I wanted to point out is the stitching, right? So they both have triple stitches along here. Red Wings is more subtle looking. So by that, I mean it's got contrast stitching. So the middle of the stitch here in this famous triple stitch that Red Wing is very well known for, uh, the middle stitch is white, the others are darker. On the counter, you've also got two lines of stitching. One is white, one is darker. What that means is that it just doesn't look quite as, it looks more subtle than a boot that would have like all white stitching. And if you wanna know what that looks like, you can just check out the Thorogood because this is all white stitching here. It's also a triple stitching down here and also double stitching on the counter. And it's also got like a row of triple stitching running along the side of the boot as well. So you can see here that this makes for a boot that has, it looks like quite a lot busier. We're just talking about aesthetics right now, right? So it's a lot more busy. You also, I wanted to point out that the Thorogood has a flag on the side. It's also got branding on the counter as well. So overall, uh, it is a, uh, it's, it's a louder looking boot, right? I'm not saying that's a bad thing at all. A lot of people love it. A lot of people love having this flag on the side of their boots as well. But when you're comparing the two, uh, you would, I think it's pretty clear that Red Wing has a more sort of understated aesthetic to it. It's still a very, very tough boot. It still can go through a lot of punishment. I've put it through a lot of punishment myself. But yeah, just aesthetics wise, the Red Wing is more subtle. The Thargood, it's a little bit louder. So as far as the leather goes, these boots are both oil tanned, which doesn't tell you much because sometimes that means the leather has been vegetable tanned and then oil tanned. Sometimes it means chrome tanned and oil tanned. Uh, both of these boots are chrome tanned then oil tanned, which makes the leather softer and easier to break in than if it had a lot of vegetable tanning to it. The main takeaway I want you to get here is that the leather Thargood uses is thinner and not quite as high quality. That doesn't mean it's poor quality, but Red Wing's leather is superior. It's thicker, it's more oily and waxy. It looks nicer as it ages. This is partly because Red Wing runs their own tannery, SB Foot Tanning Co, which helps them to have better quality control than when you're outsourcing your leather. One more time, the leather is not bad on the Thoroughgood. It gets the job done. Aesthetically, I like Red Wings, but it's also thicker and tougher and because of all the oils and waxes in it as well, it ages better and you don't have to condition as often either. As for the sole, this one things get really different. So Red Wing's sole is crepe rubber which I was surprised to learn that's the same sort of inexpensive rubber used on the very, very flimsy Clark's Desert Boot, but it's sturdier and thicker. So it's a crude form of natural rubber. It's made from running coagulated latex through rollers. And Red Wings crap is sturdy, grippy, thick, but relatively soft. Like I can compress it with my thumb here without too much effort. It doesn't feel like a slipper or anything, but it's more porous and a bit softer than the rubber on the Thoroughgood shoe, which I'm gonna get into in a hot second. There's also a cork midsole and a leather insole, both of which mold around the shape of your foot as they age. So it's a really classic way of making traditional heritage boots. Uh, there's no shank though. That's a piece of usually metal uh, under the midfoot in the midsole somewhere, and it helps to provide arch support and stability to the shoe, especially as it ages. Finally, the upper and the sole are attached 
with a Goodyear welt, which is a means of stitching the two together that makes them really, really easy to resole because they're both attached to a welt instead of to each other. And it makes it really water resistant as well. The tough shoes, you can wear them in the rain, the snow, you'll be good. Thargood sole is different. This is polyurethane and Thargood makes it themselves. Traditionally, like they used to use a Christy Vibram sole that was made from blown rubber, but they swapped it out for a polyurethane that they say lasts 25% longer than Vibram. And this sole is also oil and slip resistant and it's resistant to electrical shock as well. It can withstand 18,000 volts at 60 hertz for a minute. So as I alluded to before, one of these boots is more often used in actual work situations. Warehouse, linemen, electricians. Uh, I worked in a warehouse myself for many years. I saw plenty of these shoes. Red Wings boot is a fantastic and tough and durable boot, but it's not like quite as certifiably a boot for work. So relative to Red Wing, uh, Thargood's shoe is also more lightweight. And I think it's also more durable, the outsole is. Like it's harder. That's the flip side of the durability. But uh, some older folks say it's a little bit harder on the knees, but that totally depends on your age, your joint health, that sort of thing. I haven't noticed that myself, but I have noticed that this is a little bit harder than the outsole on Red Wing. Thargood also has a cork midsole, and this one does have a shank. It's made of fiberglass, which helps to keep the shoe really lightweight. And like you might think the shank is the craziest difference between these two shoes, but man, you should hear about the next two layers in this sole for one, there's a Poron 4000 comfort cushion in here. That's material used in a bunch of sneaker brands like Adidas and Nike. Uh, Thursday Boot Company has Poron in some of their models as well. The idea with Poron is that it provides cushioning with air permeable open cells that resist moisture and help with shock absorption. Add to that shock absorption is the fact that this has an insert that Thargood calls the dual density ultimate shock absorption insert. So you removable sort of footbed. Um, which is uh, pretty cool. Really helps shock absorption. The shock absorption is much better in Thargood than it is with the Red Wing. Finally, the Thargood also has a Goodyear welt, but it is a storm welt. So they both have Goodyear welts, but in a storm welt, uh, the lip of the welt kind of bends up onto the upper and it makes it even more water resistant than a regular Goodyear welt. So the Thargood is a bit, bit better in wet weather as well. All right, so I'm gonna quickly go through the fit and the size and the price so I can just keep my summary, we can get out of here, all right? Now, the fit is actually the same with both boots. By that I mean uh, you want to go down half a size from your true size for both of these shoes. So if you know what your true size is, uh, that's what you are on the Brannock device, which is that kind of device that you put your foot in when you go to a shoe shop and it tells you like what your size is. Uh, you want to go down a half size from that for both of these. So I'm an 11.5, that's my true size. In most sneakers, I'm a 12. In these, I'm an 11. Some people say they want to go down a full size for Red Wing. Uh, I haven't found that to be the case. Some people say that, but uh, I think a really good rule of thumb is going to half a size for both of these shoes. As for the actual comfort, I kind of have to give it to Thorogood in some respects at least, because for starters, Red Wing has a nightmarish break-in period. Anyone who has a pair of Red Wing boots will tell you this, uh, that you're gonna lose, I mean, for me, I lost like chunks of my heel, like wearing these in. For the first like week or so, I couldn't wear them for very long. I couldn't wear them for more than one day in a row because my foot was recovering from it. Uh, that's because I was breaking in the boots, right? Which is not a big deal. A lot of people like to have a tough break in with their boots because it's sort of like they earn the right to wear it once it gets comfy, once the leather's softened up and everything. But the break in, I mean, I can't pretend it's fun. I can't pretend it's fun. So uh, the break in wasn't fun. I did not get a break in with the Thargood, uh, I think that's because, like I mentioned earlier, the leather is like a little bit thinner, it's not quite as tough, as rigid, as all those sorts of things. And I also wanted to mention that with the Thargood boot, uh, the shock absorption is, uh, is quite a lot better than with the Red Wing. Now they both have very good shock absorption because they both have these like relatively soft wedge soles. But like I mentioned, the Thargood has a dual density insert and all this pour on and shock absorbing stuff going on in there, so that, Combined with the fact that I didn't get a break in, combined with the fact that the leather is like a little bit thinner, all that means that it's like, it's a bit more sneaker-like than the Red Wing. Now the Red Wing is definitely comfy and I've been wearing it for years and years and years and over years, the cork and leather soles, like they compress and they uh, sort of mold the shape of your foot and they become very you, like it feels like a pair of boots made for me. So I do really like them. I just have to say uh, the Thargood, it's easier when you first get them and uh, even now, after many months of wearing them, the shock absorption is still better on the Thargood. And then there's the price, very short section. This is 280 bucks, depending on where you get it. You can get seconds and everything, but uh, generally speaking, uh, 280 bucks for the Red Wing and 190 bucks or so for the Thargood. So uh, Thargood's cheaper.
All right, so to sum up, the Thoroughgood is lighter, uh, has better shock absorption, the outsole is more durable, it's easier to get on and off, it's better for work, it's better for wet weather, it has a shank and it's cheaper. Which sounds like I prefer the Thoroughgood. And these are all very good reasons to prefer the Thoroughgood boot, of course. I'm trying to be impartial here, but I still think there are plenty of reasons why you might want to get the Red Wing boot instead. If you are a working man looking for something to wear on the job, uh, definitely Thoroughgood, uh, it, it tends to be the pick in that regard. The Red Wing, I would recommend more if you want something that looks good, I think it looks better, like, you know, it's more subtle looking, it goes more outfits, all that sort of very superficial stuff, but nonetheless, that is why a lot of people get their boots. Looks a bit better, I think it ages better as well because the leather is like nice and thick. I think the leather is better quality as well. And it's also the sort of boot you might want to get if you're more interested in like uh, wearing something that is more traditionally a boot, like something that is the way that boots were made 100 years ago. The Thoroughgood has this fancy polyurethane, it has this foam, it has this other sort of stuff that makes it very, very good. It makes it very useful. It makes it like very comfy, all this other sort of stuff. The Red Wing boot though, it's got the cork midsole, it's got the leather insole. For starters, that means that the Red Wing boot, over time, it molds more to the shape of your foot than all this foam and stuff does in the Thoroughgood boot. It's not necessarily a downside for the Thoroughgood, but as I mentioned earlier, with the thicker leather and also with the cork midsole and the leather insole, over time, the Red Wing like, really does conform to the shape of your foot, it makes it feel like it's a custom boot made for you. That's not what you get with like all the fancy foam and stuff in the Thoroughgood and also the thinner leather as well. Very subjective as to what's most important. I'm just gonna say why some people might prefer the Red Wing boot. So that's the main stuff Red Wing has going for it. Uh, it, it feels more you as you wear it. Um, the leather is also thicker. I think it's better quality as well. Uh, it looks cooler as it ages. Uh, and also it's like a more subtle and simple aesthetic. Again, completely subjective. Uh, the only things that aren't really subjective here is that the leather is thicker and the outsole is a little bit softer on the Red Wing too. So those are two things that uh, some people like. The softer sole on the Red Wing does mean that it wears down a little bit faster than the Thoroughgood boot. You'll need to resole it more often if you're wearing them for the exact same amount of time each. But it does have a Goodyear welt. And like resoling isn't free, but you can resole a Goodyear welted boot many, many, many times over. And it's not a massive deal for the longevity of the boot. And some people consider that a fair price to pay for the uh, the softer sole that you get with the Red Wing. You know, I can definitely say that as a corollary, the Thoroughgood has more forms, so the shock absorption better. But then again, the outsole is not quite as soft and so on. I can go back and forth all day, but that's it. That's Red Wing versus Thoroughgood. These are the most important things that you should know about these two boots. Personally, I kind of like the simpler look of the Red Wing. I like the tougher leather, I like the softer sole, and I like its patina potential, the way it fades over time, more so than the Thoroughgood, which simply doesn't have as nice leather and doesn't mold to your foot the same way over time as the Red Wing does. But of course, there are a whole lot of benefits for the Thoroughgood that I've already mentioned, and which one you prefer really depends on you. So which one do you like best? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know which one you have in the comments below as well, if you do, and if you got both, I just want to hear your comparison as well. And uh, that's the whole video. That's it. We're all done. Make sure you subscribe as well, please, because uh, I've got a lot more bit reviews and bit comparisons and denim reviews and all other sorts of videos coming up.